Hi there, welcome back. Today, we will create a shockwave effect using fusion tools in DaVinci Resolve. Add a fusion composition to the timeline, change the duration to 2 seconds. And open it in the fusion page. From the toolbar, drag a background node to the editor, connect to the media out node. Set alpha to 0 to make the background transparent. Add a fast noise node and merge with the background. Select fast noise node and go to the inspector. In the noise tab, change the detail to 10. Set contrast to 2.7. And brightness around 0.3. Uncheck the lock XY option so that we can set X and Y scale separately. X scale to 9.5 Y to 5.5 Increase the seeth rate to 0.15 so that the noise is animated as the clip plays. Check both discontinuous and inverted options. Switch to the color tab. Change the type to gradient. Change the alpha value to 0 so the first color is set to transparent. We now have an animated fast noise, it looks good. For better visibility, we can turn off the checker underlay in the viewer. While the fast noise node is still selected, click the rectangle button in the toolbar. A mask is added to the noise node. Change the mask to a horizontal bar. Move the mask to the bottom. Soften the edge a little bit. Make sure the playhead is at the beginning. Keyframe the center parameter, height and soft edge parameters. Go to frame 25. Move the mask up to the middle. A keyframe is automatically added. Increase the height to 0.1. Add more soft edge to the mask. Now the bar is moving up, but the noise seems like staying there without following the mask. Select the fast noise node. Go to the beginning of the clip. Go to the inspector and switch to the noise tab. Keyframe the center parameter. Go to frame 25. Change the Y value to 0 0.75. OK, now the animations are in sync. We can open the keyframes editor to manage keyframes. I always check this option to show only selected tools, otherwise it will list all the nodes in the editor, which can be very distracting. Once the nodes are selected, we see the nodes listed on the left, and all associated frames are displayed on the right side. Next we will add fade in and fade out effects, by keyframing the blend parameter of the merge node. Set blend to 0 at frame 0, and 1 at frame 5. And at frame 25, set blend to 0 to fade out the noise. Right-click the second keyframe, choose Smooth to ease the keyframe point. We now have prepared the fast noise animation, which is the foundation for the shockwave effect. Select Merge node, press Shift space to open Tool Selection window, find the coordinate space, add to the editor. Go to the inspector, set the shape to polar to rectangular. The fast noise transforms to an oval shape in the viewer, which is cool. But it's not a circle. To fix that, select Fast Noise node, go to the Image tab in the inspector, and uncheck Auto Resolution. Change height to 1920, so it becomes a square. Repeat the same steps to set the background also to square. 
Now this is a circle, but when we play the clip, it's not the animation like the examples at the beginning. It doesn't have a blowing out effect. Insert a transform node after the fast noise node. Bring the transform node into the viewer. Move playhead to the beginning. Change pivot Y to zero. Keyframe the aspect parameter. Go to frame 25. Set aspect to 1.5. This will stretch the image. Put the media out node back to the viewer. It's much better. The noises are now blowing outwards, just like in the scene of an explosion. Now we have built the first shockwave animation, we can add an underlay tool to organize the nodes, and name it Wave 1. Click the title bar of the Wave 1 to select the underlay, and all nodes inside. Press Command C to make a copy, or right click and choose copy from the menu. Paste into the editor. Hold the Option or Alt key and click the title to select only the underlay tool. Press F2 or right click and choose Rename, change the name to Wave 2. Disconnect Merge 1 from the coordinate space and reconnect to the copied merge node. Connect the new merge output to coordinate space. We will adjust the fast noise and keyframes to create a wave of different looks and feels. Select all nodes of Wave 2, go to the Keyframes Editor, select the keyframes at frame 25. Move them to frame 20, to shorten a bit of the animation. Move the playhead to frame 20. Select the Rectangle node. In the Inspector, increase the center Y, so the animation path is longer than the previous one. Drag the noise node into the viewer, so it's easy to confirm the changes we do. Select the fast noise node. In the inspector, lower the contrast. Decrease the brightness. Change a bit of the X scale. Y scale. Set Seether to about 0.25. We can also change the seeth rate. Switch to the color page. Set the offset to minus 0.2. OK, that's enough changes made. Bring the media out back to the viewer. It's showing two layers. And the animation looks more dynamic. Select Wave 2, make a copy and paste into the editor. Rename to Wave 3. Similar to what we did with Wave 2, insert Wave 3 to the node tree. Select all nodes in Wave 3. In the Keyframes editor, select the keyframes at frame 20, move to frame 30. This time, let's bring the transform node into the viewer, as we will be making more changes for the third wave. Select the fast noise node. Increase the contrast. Set brightness to minus 0.3. X scale to 12. Y scale to 5. Change the seed and seeth rate. While the fast noise node is still selected, press shift space, find the displace node, add to the node tree. Drag a blur node from the toolbar into wave 3. Branch out the noise output and connect to the blur node. Connect the blur output to the green foreground input of the displace node. This way, we use the noise itself as the map to displace the noise result. Select the blur node. Change the blur size to 2. 
Select the Displace node. Change the Refraction Strength to around minus 0.6. We can continue to play with the Displace Strength and Blur Size to get something silky and creamy. I think this is good for the demo. Insert a Brightness Contrast node between the Displace and Transform node. Increase the Gain value to 2. Get the Media Out node back into the viewer. Play the clip. This looks great, but there is a minor issue here. There is an edge line in the result, pretty noticeable. This is how we get rid of that. Select the three rectangle mask nodes. Reduce the width of each mask until the edge disappears. Move the playhead to verify the result. Continue to adjust the mask widths if needed. Now the edge line is gone, but it left an empty area behind. We need to fill that up. Drag a merge node to the editor. Disconnect the coordinate space node and connect to the merge node. Drag a branch from the coordinate space output, connect to the same merge node as foreground input. Link the merge node to the media out node. Select the merge node, go to the inspector. Rotate the image by 90 degrees so that the empty area is covered. Go to the viewer, right-click to open the context menu. Select Merge to Effect Mask, Triangle. A triangle mask is added to the Merge node. Adjust the triangle to cover the empty section. Soften the edge. That's it, we now have a seamless shockwave effect. Next I want to add a few more final touches to make it more colorful and rich looking like we saw earlier in the video. Drag a color corrector node into the editor, insert after the merge node. Using this color corrector, it's just a simple click to change the shockwave to any color we want. With the color corrector node selected, press shift space to open the tool selection window. Find the duplicate node, add to the node tree. Set the time offset to 10 frames. Perfect, this is the result I'm expecting. Turning the duplicate node on and off, we can tell how much difference it adds to the result. We can also change color gains to set different colors for the second copy, which can create some really cool results. Because of the time offset, the image is now showing from the very beginning. We can keyframe the blend parameter to fade in the copies. Set blend to 0 at frame 0. Set to 1 at frame 5. Finally, we have done the shockwave effect in the Fusion page. To reuse it in the Edit page, we can save it as a macro template. But before we do that, Let's add a keyframe stretcher node at the end. So that when the template is used in a timeline, the animation speed will adjust automatically as we change the duration of the clip. Go to the inspector, set source end to 30. Stretch start to 0, end to 30. To create the macro, select all nodes except media out. Right-click any of the selected nodes, choose Macro, Create Macro. Enter Macro name. Select the parameters we want to export. For this effect, I want to include all the basic color controls from the Color Corrector node. There are so many parameters in the Correction section, it's very confusing which one to pick. To help identify the right parameter, click the Color Corrector node to open the inspector. Hover the mouse over the parameter, the name is displayed at the bottom left under the node editor. For example, this one is called wheel hue 1. 
The next one is wheel saturation one. With the help of the inspector, select all the parameters in this section. Once we are done with selecting parameters, choose save as group from the option menu and save to the generator's template folder as shown on the screen. We don't need to do this now, I've already saved the macro, and you can download the template through the link in the description below. Once you create the macro or install the download version, go to the edit page, and you will see the shockwave generator in the effects panel. Drag to the timeline. The animation runs for one second by default. In the inspector, uncheck the lock animation option, the effect duration will be adjusted to the length of the clip. Now it runs really slow, since the clip length is 5 seconds by default. Let's trim it to 2 seconds for the demo. We can use the color wheel to change the shockwave color. or adjust the color detail with these sliders. The subwave gain sliders are used to change the color gains of the surrounding outer wave. There is one final thing I want to show is how to give the animation a more dynamic feeling, something like the waves fade away slowly after a sudden explosion. Right click the clip, select new compound clip. Right click again, select Retime Curve to show the Retime Frame Curve Editor. We can also press Ctrl R to show the Retime Controls. Hold the Alt or Option key and click the curve line to add a speed control point. Drag the point up to run the clip faster at the beginning. We can see the speed change on the Retime Controls above. Select the control point. Click this ease icon to smooth the curve. Two handles are now available on each side of the point for further adjustment. Add the sound effect and we get a really cool effect. If you want to change the shockwave's look and feel, you can open it in the Fusion page and play with all the parameters from the nodes in the Fusion composition. For example, for the duplicate node, we can change the number of copies, time offset, size, or angles. Or change the fast noise seeth and rates. All right, that's all for today. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.